No, I just I don't know where I was going with, but I you know with the car dealership stuff. But I just I enjoyed my experience. Um, Amy Fox, one of your salesperson salespeople, is um, just an awesome individual. I met her through Chamber of Commerce, and when I had the opportunity to buy a car, I wanted to buy it from Amy. So, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, yeah. So, um, how long have you uh, owned the dealership? Well, it's that's a family dealership. Okay. We started. We moved here from Michigan Mm -hmm. in 1983. And so we've been here ever since. Mm-hmm. And my dad started the dealership. I was 27 when we came here mm-hmm. and been here ever since. And he passed away in uh, 2019. Mm-hmm. And so my sister and I have the dealership now. Yeah. I heard your dad was an amazing, amazing human being. Truly. I mean, yeah. everything I, I've i learned, I've learned from my dad. You know, it's really neat. You know, you say you can't choose your parents, but... I was lucky and mm-hmm. uh, fortunate to have two great parents. Yeah, and, uh, Dad was just this person that's community all the way, and a great individual. Mm-hmm. Um, never knew a stranger. Yeah, uh, he would come up to people and um, just the stories of true compassion. He would do things that. Um, just a, a quick story. In 2019, he was. Um, in the hospital and the last few days, and this lady came in the showroom. She says, is Mr. O here? And I said, no, he's actually in the hospital right now. And she says, well, I just would like, I'd like to tell him a story. And I says, you know what? I'll pass the story on to him. And she says, yeah, you know, I was at Cartwright's meet two, about two years ago and we were in the line and she, um, he came, we're standing waiting to pay. And he made the comment to me, you smoke, don't you? He says, I, I can smell in your clothes. He says, have you ever thought about quitting smoking? And I would never say that. <laughs> yeah. And he's, you know, but he had a way of saying that was genuine concern. And she says, you know what? She says, I thought about it and I quit smoking because of that. And she says, I came in here and this was two years later. And I came in to say thank you for that conversation. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Holy moly. I would never get away with something like that. I'd, I'd get, get smacked. Punched out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, he, he would, he would pick up conversations with people and, you learn so much from him. And, you know, when you sat down, he'd say, well, you go sit at that table and I'll sit at this table and we'll learn twice as much mm-hmm. rather than talking to each other. And we still talk to each other as a, a family and, and that type of thing. But he was always about learning. He was just curious about everything. Mm-hmm. Where, where did that mindset from him come from? I mean, you know, he grew up in a farm in South Dakota and then he went to General Motors Institute and he worked for Buick and he bought a, went, went to work for a couple of dealerships, and then he bought this dealership in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan in 1967 with very little experience. And I would say, if you ask Dad today at that opportunity, he would say, it's, and it's the same thing true with me, it's not about the dealership, it's about the community. Mm-hmm. And the community, it's so much, it's giving back to the community. And he, so he would be, in Sault Ste. Marie, they get more snow than any place in the United States. I mean, it. It's, that's probably, that is the reason we're not there because mm-hmm. it's so much work, but he would plow this. He had, uh, at that time we had three dump trucks. We had an end loader. We had, um, a Chevy truck with a plow and a Jeep with a front and a back plow. And this Jeep only had two seats in it. And so there was four kids in the family and we would take turns riding with dad up and down the streets. And he would p- literally plow Ashman street, which was the main street in Sault Ste. Marie, both sides. Wow. And that was just his way of giving back. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, obviously, you, I don't know if you inherited a lot of those traits, but it's, uh, I'm sure that's where your desire to help the community comes Absolutely. from. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that's, I, I would have, I would have loved to meet him. Yeah. That's, he was a great individual. He's a great dad, a great human being. Um, and, you know, his legacy still lives on with me and with our employees too. With, you know, he's just, and with our customers. Customers come in still to this day. And say, you know, your dad, he came up uh, just all the time where he'd see things. And the interesting thing about my dad is the projects that he started, you know, there was one in Moline, Illinois, which is a Niobe Zoo. He started that zoo. And he's, in Sault Ste. Marie, we started the, he started the I-500 snowmobile race. And then he has the Josephine County tree plant. Mm-hmm. And then he's over on the coast. There's a condo over there that our family has. And he's got the, it's the Ross Road Trail. And he built the trail from after he retired from the beach to the, the top of the condo. Wow. And it's signed that way today. The signs are there. So you just love to get back. Yeah. I wanted the, one of the, the plant a tree thing I think is especially cool. 
Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that works and, and why he did it? You know, he's he was always about planting trees. He, he never really got involved in, you know, the the cutting of the trees or the, the but he just believed in helping students understand the appreciation of why you should plant a tree today. Mm -hmm. And so he started planting trees and it's 25 years ago. And now these trees are big. Mm -hmm. And he always made sure they had tags with a student's name on them. And so the students could go out later and find their tree. Yeah. I just think that's so cool. We have a, a mutual friend, Doug Tripp, who um, was involved in that program. And, he, and, he, and he's a professional arborist now. I mean, he owns Sistu Tree Experts, and that's what he does. And he talks about that. And like That was like an ins inspiring thing for him, mm -hmm. was planting that tree. And that he has a crazy love for trees. I mean, if right. you hear, hear this guy talk, I mean, he can be like, oh, yeah, that's a blah, 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 blah. And it's, <laughs> it's infested with this kind of bug. And if you don't do this, it's not going to, you know. And he just has this insane knowledge of trees. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to trees. I didn't realize that's why he, he got into it. Was well, that. I'm not sure if that's – I remember him talking well, part, specifically part about it, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I would imagine it that. He planted happened. a seed, literally sure. just like a planted a seed of a tree. It's yeah. planted a seed for a career. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's inspiration. And so. it still goes on even after he's gone. To, you know, still, you know, we didn't do it, do it during COVID, but it's been renamed the Ross Row Tree Plant now. Yeah. No, I just think that's way cool.